guys welcome back to another episode of the e36 m3 drift car project project main hope you guys have enjoyed watching the series so far it's been a bit of a uh, sporadic series it's been about two months <laughs> since my last upload i've been in school been kind of taking some time to actually focus on trying to get good grades you know kind of the adult responsibility thing to do but today it's my second day of spring break and I'd like to get this thing running. Um, we don't have everything we need. I'm still waiting on brakes to come in this week. So unfortunately, it's not necessarily a situation where we could maybe drive it, but there is a good chance that we could get this thing running. But today, I have something very, very special to share with you guys. And that is the fact that Chase Bays is the very first sponsor of this E36 M3. When I tell you I am honored, that would be the understatement of the century. Chase Bays is an absolutely incredible company with incredible people, very local to me actually, with guys that are dedicated to only using the best of the best and to solving things in a very aesthetically pleasing and OEM plus manner. Um, Chase Bays makes all sorts of stuff from hydro e-brakes to brake lines to what you're going to see here today, um, upgraded power steering kits, um, they make engine swap parts, all sorts of hard to find things like that. Um, I'm gonna put a link to their website in the description. Please go check them out, guys. If you like what you see in this video for your E36, please pick up a kit, you will not regret it. I run that kit on the convertible. I Well, it's a different kit between M52 and S52, but it's the same thing, um, same idea. I run it on the convertible, I've had no issues whatsoever, so I just want to extend the biggest thank you in the world to Chase Space for sponsoring this video and sponsoring this car. And uh, now, without further ado, let's talk about what we have from them today. So today, ladies and gentlemen, we are putting Workmeister S1s on the, oh, wait, wrong video. Okay, so here's what we have going on the car today first, because if you know anything about E36s, you'll know that the power steering systems on these cars are notoriously prone to leaks. Even from the factory with brand new components, I'm convinced these things were leaking. So, what we have here is Chase Base newly revised E36, S50, S52, and M50, if I'm not mistaken, power steering kit. There are tons of awesome revisions to this kit recently, but first I'm going to kind of walk you through what we're looking at so that you can install this kit better yourself at home. So first, just to identify the lines, first line we have here is the pump feed line. The next line we have here is the high pressure line. You can identify this line by the fact that it's shiny and has this Chase Base logo right here. This is the rack to cooler line. And then this long line is the cooler to reservoir line. Also in the kit as an option is Chase Base brand new revised power steering cooler. So the recommendation I would give to you E36 guys on getting this cooler or not is that if your car sees track duty, is especially drifting, drifting much more than grip racing, you need this cooler. I wouldn't necessarily say that this is necessary for a street car. I actually don't have the cooler on the convertible. Never had an issue. You gotta think, you're not really using that much intense steering input on the street, so I would use that to make your decision because the, the cooler is an expensive option, but for a drift car like the M3, no questions asked, needs it. So without getting too technical and too nerdy, I wanna talk through some of the changes to the kits and the things that you can expect. If you see these gold hose fittings, and if you've watched Ryan Turek's Formula Super Build, you'll recognize these because he talks in great depth about these hoses in his videos. These are Brown and Miller Racing, more commonly seen as BMRS hoses. These are bar none, the best hoses on the market available. Just the equipment to make these is obscenely expensive. Chase Base has gone to great lengths to make this possible for this kit, and these hoses will not fail. These are the best hoses on the market. They're used in NASCAR, Indy racing, you name it. 
people want these hoses. So if you want the best, here it is. So another fantastic feature of the Chase Base Kit is, I mean, just for one, the fact that you're going from that crappy plastic reservoir to an all aluminum reservoir. But if you, I could talk all day about the triple baffle in this reservoir and how just amazing it is, how it prevents aeration, how it prevents fluid spillover. But one thing I wanna to touch on because it's new for this version of the kit is that this Delrin bracket right here has actually been upgraded to a higher heat resistant Delrin. So if you're worried about potentially this, because this is actually just a spacer to allow you to use it in the um, factory location. If you're worried about on track this getting too hot and this bracket potentially melting and this falling out, you don't gotta worry about it. This bracket will not melt under any circumstances. I mean, unless the car is on fire, but then you've got bigger problems. <laughs> Another update here is this absolutely beautiful power steering cooler. So the benefit of this is that it's an inline cooler and you don't have to have big, a big fin cooler. This was actually designed and tested in-house by Chase Base. You can see it actually has their own unique part number on it. This is not just some off the shelf cooler. Chase Base designed this. So this is beautiful. It mounts right in front of the rack, just like the factory um, hardline section. And uh, yeah, I'm very excited to show you how you guys, how good this is gonna look all put together and mounted up. I'm telling you, this kit is the best of the best. And now without further ado, let's go over here to the subframe and get this mounted up. Okay, so this is probably the best demonstration I can give for how everything goes together here. I've got the subframe out of the car, I've got the steering rack out of the car, and I've got these two lines, which are the two lines that connect to the actual rack ready to go. I've got the cooler here and the brackets, and I'm gonna put all of this together. So the first thing that we're going to install is going to be this high pressure line. So this high pressure line, what you're gonna do is, this straight end is what goes to the rack, right? You see how there's a 45, well, you see how there's a 45 degree end and then there's a straight end. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna move this protective cap, make sure that these two ends are tight together. And then you're gonna come over here to the high pressure side and simply thread it in along with the crush washer of course and just like that it's that simple and obviously too you can still rotate the line just a little bit so you can get everything oriented how it needs to go but for now we're just going to leave it just like that so the next line is the low pressure rack to cooler line again straight end what you're going to do is take this protective cap off you're going to go here to the low pressure fitting on the steering rack. And then it's that simple. Those are your two lines from the rack. So the next step here is actually going to be to mount the cooler to these brackets. As you can see, Chase Bays provides some beautiful countersunk hardware. Okay, so now, like I had mentioned, you're going to want to take your cooler and actually tighten these bolts up. They are a five millimeter Allen. So this end kind of slots in like that. And then this one goes like that. And then boom, you have your power steering cooler. And so then basically after that, imagine this was in the car. Once this was attached in place, all you need to do would be to tighten down your subframe and steering rack nut and bolt. And then the cooler would be in place. And then all you got after that is two more lines. And uh, yeah, we're making good progress. And now, all I need to do now that that's tight is just get it comfortably aligned and thread it on to the cooler. So yeah. Okay, so now we have a very exciting process to go down. The front subframe is going into the car. Let's make sure that's tight. Make sure it's not leaning or anything. So I'll kind of sort of save you guys the trouble. Um, in doing this process, a couple things that you need to look out for. When you're raising up the subframe, you're going to want to make sure, first of all, that the engine mounts actually line up with the holes on the engine arms. The second thing that is probably the most critical, actually, is you're going to want to make sure that the steering shaft is splining into the steering rack. You'll get to a certain point, and if you lift the subframe, up too high, you'll actually have to lower it back down to try to get the splines to align. It's 
It's a bit of a process going back and forth and I spent a lot of time here so I'm gonna kind of sort of skip to the good part where everything is back together and uh, but yeah. Okay. Ugh. All right, so now should be good to go. I've got the engine raised a little bit with a block of wood and the jack on the oil pan. So now I'm just going to torque up these front subframe bolts, starting with torquing them to 50 foot pounds. Look at that. This is a big moment. She's under her own weight. <laughs> So now we are going to torque down the Condor engine mounts to nine foot pounds. Okay, now I'm gonna hop underneath. Not gonna film it, but they're super easy to get to. And I'm just gonna go ahead and torque the bottom nuts to the same nine foot pounds. Okay, so now if I can finagle it around the GoPro, just like that. This is how you install the actual reservoir. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and show you how to do these lines underneath the car. So this one is for the high pressure shiny hose. I went ahead and just took the fitting off the, or the adapter off the hose. Okay, so that's a bit of a difficult thing to get it to line up, but that is on. I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten that. Okay, so the next hose is this large diameter hose. Um, this one is actually going to be the feed line for the pump. It just goes into this bottom fitting on the pump with this banjo bolt. And then this end attaches to the large fitting on the bottom of the reservoir. Easy peasy. And now the final line is going to be this line right here which runs from the cooler back to the reservoir. Okay. chase base power steering kit and the install again this kit is the best on the market there is actually not another kit that i know of that completely fixes all of the factory e36 power steering issues i want to give the biggest thank you to chase base for sponsoring this car for having faith in me and for feeling like i'm a good fit for their brand uh, i'm gonna leave links to this kit in the description below as well as chase bay's website if you have an e30 E36, E46, um, S chassis, RX7. Um, there's all sorts of other cars that they make products for. Check out their website in the description below. But biggest thing for my guys is you need this power steering kit. This is not like an upgrade thing. I mean, it's an upgrade in the sense of it works, but this is a reliability thing to keep you on track or to keep you on the road. I mean, like I said, I use it in my street car too. So. I'm so happy with this kit. Everything came great or turned out great. So I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this. I hope this helped for those of you who are wanting to install this kit who already have it. Um, one more thing I wanted to add is obviously not shown in this video, but, they, but after you get the kit installed or any power steering kit, you're going to need to add fluid to the system. It's automatic transmission fluid only in E36s. I like to use Redline D4 ATF. Um, I'll put up a shot of it just so you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. And another important thing with the Chase Base Power Steering Kit is you fill the reservoir up to half. They have an instruction on how to bleed the car on their website. I'm going to leave that in the description below because those instructions might also help you guys as well. So 
Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, press the like button and subscribe. It actually helps me out a ton. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for being here. Keep your heads up. Remember, you can do anything you put your mind to. Your doubt and anxiety do not have power over you. They're lies and you are so much more than good enough to make all of your dreams come true. Whether it be cars, school, uh, relationships, whatever you wanna do, it's all in your head is the only reason why it can't happen. Once you decide that it can, it will. So, I love you guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Last century.